the goal theory okay so what do you mean by goal theory it is considered to be a heading of motivation to work so where we are trying to focus mostly how we can make the people to work make them to work it is what we call it as goal theory it is a people's goal or intentions which play important part in determining the behavior so that is what we call it as behavior so we are mostly focused on how can we make them work towards they want to achieve they want to achieve the goal they want to complete or accomplish the goal so according to the expectancy theory of motivation suggests the value gave rise to the experience of emotions and desires how they purely focus on emotions and desires this is what the known by a uh, very well known so where the goal theory mostly focus on how to make them work their behavioral aspects their attitudes their performance so they are purely make them towards how they can fulfill their work or the objective of work if you can make use of them to work then you are achieving so then how do we set the goal for improving and performance what are the goal setting we can say we can say goal setting goal setting and performance the setting of the combination of goal is very difficult where when we want to make a person more committed towards his work it is a definitely it's a difficult task then how can we make him to achieve the goal how can we make them achieve the goal so people with a specific quantitative goals not qualitative we got call it as a quantitative goals so let me write for you so goal setting the nothing but how can we make the person's commitment to achieve the goal regulates so how are we going to regulate the person's commitment person's commitment the next how do we focus on this people with specific quantitative goals means the level of performance giving deadlines for completion of the task will perform better than people with no set of goals means what we do we keep a time limit that is what we call it as deadline generally we call it as a deadline so how can we make them deadline how can we give so for completion of the work so then a no goal then a no goal without time setting if we keep the deadlines or time limit or deadline then definitely we make them work according to the according to the plan so that make them we are pushing them that is what we call it as goal setting so there is a definite performance improvement when we try to set the goal that is what we call it as stretching the goal so according to garton according to garton the stretch goals which are ambitious highly targeted opportunities for breakthrough improvement in the performance that is what he mentioned in a book by name but uh, with a just a sorry it is not strength it is a stretch the goal stretch he says stretch goals this is what uh, he made means we are trying to pushing them to be more ambitious highly targeted opportunities for breakthrough improvements in his performance so 
it helped them to gain improved results and better sense of achievement by themselves by specifying the goals with the specific goals identifying the targets directly related to their work and we must measure the targets of time and performance so we are going to measure the targets we are trying to measure the targets time of time and performance time and performance this is what is known for a goal setting and performance make how we can improve but there are certain practical implications means the problems we arise the specific performance goal should systematically being identified so if we are unable to identify them systematically then definitely they create a problems so systematic identification of goals systematic identification of goals next we must set them in an order we must be put uh, must be set in an order we cannot uh, randomly give the goals we must set them in order to direct behavior and maintain the motivation we cannot always uh, go with the blind shot we must set an order where we they can achieve the goals then goal should be set at a challenging at the realistic level we cannot blindly say keep on giving targets no they must be achievable means at the realistic level challenges are given at at realistic level than imaginary level so when we try to give the challenges at the realistic level then we can expect some performance improvement and we must take a complete and accurate timely feedbacks are taken so it must be complete accurate and timely feedback must be taken timely feedback must be taken so this is what the main focus of uh, this uh, goal theory then when we go with uh, the other concept like attribution theory what is the main focus of attribution theory that is uh, 3.7 we can say attribution theory so under attribution theory we try to define what is the term attribution and what is meant by attribution theory and what are the assumptions what are the implications we are going to learn in this so attribution in the sense the way in which people explain their own behavior so that is what we call it as attribution means the way in which it's a very simple term in which people explain their own behavior people explain their own behavior or the other people's or other individual behavior means the process by which any person arrives at a conclusion about various influencing factors to justify their own behavior or behavior of others so let me focus on the point which is being defined may be defined as a process which a person arrives at a conclusion he is going to conclude he is arriving at a conclusion about various influencing factors about various influencing factors various influencing factors to to justify his own behavior to justify his own behavior or 
others behavior behavior of others so that is what we call it as attribution a person arrives at a conclusion about various influencing factors to justify his own behavior why his behavior is like that so he is trying to conclude himself why he is behaving because of what reason he is behaving or the others behaving so which factors are influencing him to conclude in such a way that is what the main focus in attribution theory so if you want to say an example we try to give a task to a person so he may attribute his behavior to that particular task for example if you want to buy if you are going to a market to buy certain uh, vegetables and at that time you felt that buying this much quantity is a better where it will appear to be cheaper so then you are buying it so you conclude yourself so the influencing factor is you felt it is cheap and uh, your own behavior has concluded that yes so i bought this a little bit cheaper when compared to the last week's purchase that is what the meaning of attribution <coughs> so what the main focus on what is meant by attribution theory the theory of attribution the same thing it's supported by hyder it's a one uh, research fellow by name uh, we can say hyder or we can also say hyder or hyder so suggested any individual behavior is a by combination of internal and external forces he said combination of internal and external forces perceived by an individual so that is what the conclusion means there are influencing factors so those factors might be internal might be internal factors might be internal factors or might be or external factors or internal or external factors or internal forces or external forces perceived by the individual perceived by the individual that is what the attribution theory says so the attribution theory stay states every individual judgment of behavior is impacted by their intention of past knowledge and in comparison to other people that's what i said i want to buy these so because my past experience says they were expensive now they are cheaper so that is the reason i am making a conclusion that i am buying this much quantity because previously at the same price these products are being purchased at this amount but now i am getting somewhat more than that so i felt they are cheaper that is what we call it as attribution theory says internal and external forces perceived by the individual means every individual judgment of behavior is impacted by their intentions of past knowledge and in comparison to other people known to the individual that is what uh, the judgment is conclusion when we talk about the assumptions or elements of attribution theory let's know about them what are the assumptions we can uh, know the assumptions we can uh, make about elements or assumptions or we can say elements of attribution theory elements of attribution theory what it says what it says it is heavily relies on inputs from internal and external forces it heavily relies on internal and external forces forces inputs inputs of internal and external forces the internal forces 
include the person factors like ability his skill intelligence amount of effort so these are some of the things which are controlled by an individual so when we talk about the internal forces means on what basis he is coming across his skill his ability his intelligence and his amount of effort and other factors are there amount of effort these are what uh, internal factors when they are when it is coming to the external factors when it is coming to the external factors the external factors where the individual works or he can say we can say organizational culture policies organizational policies organizational procedures and attitude of the supervisors they are external factors so this what uh, they the elements of attribution theory and there are certain three additional ones what we call it as distinctiveness consensus and consistency let us have a brief uh, discussion about this distinctiveness consensus and consistency what is meant by distinctiveness how different was the behavior of an individual when compared to the behavior with the other situational tasks how he is distinctive means how we can separate one individual with an other individual behavior in other situations other tasks how he changes his behavior how we can identify he is being as distinctive then when we talk about the consensus comparison of the behavior of an individual to the behavior of other people under same situation that is what we call it as consensus so behavior of an individual compared to the behavior of other people in the similar situation then what is consistency it refers to the continuity of behavior over a long period of time something that is not of uh, the situational that is uh, how the behavior over continuity of the behavior over a, a long period of time that is distinctiveness consensus and consistency let me write down so distinctiveness what the behavior how different how different of behavior of a person or an individual compared to the behavior of other situations compared to the behavior of other situations means we are comparative distinctive consensus comparison of behavior of individuals comparison of a behavior of a person or an individual with the other person means behavior same under same situation under same situation that is what a consensus the next consistency continuity of the behavior continuity of the behavior over a long period of time over a long period of time over a long period of time that is what we call it as distinctiveness consistent consensus and consistency and when we talk about the implications let us continue